to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 15. We welcome you today to our study of our amazing God and His indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. At a time of year when people are already thinking about Jesus and the great gift of salvation and the gift of Him coming into this world, we want to tie that to the amazing God in this series of lessons. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to take just a moment and find it, locate it, go get it, and have it ready as we're going to open up the Word of God and really plumb the depths of what a great gift it is to have Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. Today's lesson is being brought to you by uh, Church of Christ, the, the Churches of Christ in your area and by individual members of the Church of Christ. Those members of the church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be Sunday or Wednesday for Bible study or worship. They'd love for you to stop by and study God's Word with them. If you're not a member of the church and you'd like to know more, about the plan of salvation, more about the gift of Jesus Christ or what the church is, friend, you'll find people in the Lord's church who would be happy to sit down with you, open up the Bible, and explore what God's Word has to say on these subjects. And so check out the Lord's church in your local area. Also here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of God's Word in any way that we can. You can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material free of charge, a host of good Bible study material, audio lessons, video lessons, written material, transcripts, study questions, all available to you from our website, thegospelofchrist.com. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons on a host of different subjects, just go to our website, fill out our media request form. If you'd like to have a digital download, we can make that available to you right then and there. Or if you need it on a DVD or CD, you can contact us through that or the information given during this program. And we happy, we're happy to make that to, available to you free of charge as well. And friend, won't you visit on your smartphone the Apple Play uh, Apple uh, Store or the Play Store where you can download uh, the Gospel of Christ app. It is a great way to have at your access and study the Word of God in the fast-paced world in which we live in today. Let's now turn our attention to our amazing God and the indescribable gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, the picture of that gift is so beautiful in the pages of Scripture. James 1 verse 17 tells us, Every good and perfect gift, where does it come from? Comes down from above. From who? From the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. Friend, surely, the good gift of Jesus Christ, we realize the source of that gift is Almighty God Himself. Don't you love the beautiful words of John 3:16? God so loved that it motivated Him to do something. He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend, in a, in a time of giving, in a time of giving gifts and receiving gifts, there has never been a greater gift and a greater giver than Almighty God. He gave His only begotten Son. And friend, when we say gave, here's what that means. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 says, You know the grace, and in that context, the word grace is akin to giving. You know the grace or the giving 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what do you mean I know? Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be made rich. When we talk about the gift of Jesus, contemplate what that gift is. Jesus was in heaven. Out of the ivory palaces, as the psalmist said, He left the beauty and splendor of heaven. He came to this low land of sin and sorrow and gave it all up, even to the point of death, so that we could have hope and joy and salvation in Him. Can't begin to find a greater gift than that. And that gift comes with a blessing in and of itself. Romans 6, 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's the best kind of gift, free gift? No strings attached, no requirements, no pressure involved with that. I don't have to go and buy somebody else a gift. There are no strings. I don't have anything I have. No, the free gift of God available to all who will submit to and obey God's will is found in Jesus Christ. What a beautiful and an indescribable gift that is. In fact, that gift is what makes salvation available. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8, and, and we, we were so undeserving of receiving that gift. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8, the Bible says, while we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man one dying, yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare to die. Listen to this now. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Friend, when I didn't deserve it, when I was ungodly, when I was unloving, God extended that gift to mankind. Thus, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. And so can't we truly say, as the Apostle Paul did, and after hearing these ideas, can't we really say, just like Paul did in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. God, today we say thank you for that gift that you gave for the offering of your Son, and for the benefits that it brings to our life. Again, this time people are thinking about the gift of Jesus Christ. And I want you to pause and just think about what, what it took and what it meant for Jesus to come into the world. I want you to open your Bible to Luke chapter 2, and I want you to hear the story of Jesus coming into the world and, and what a beautiful picture that is. Open to Luke chapter 2. Verses 1 through 20. The Bible says this, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was while they were there that the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts 
praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them in the heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Friend, this is a, this is a beautiful account of the Son of God, of Emmanuel, which is translated God with us, coming into the world. I want you to think about the times that Jesus came into. These were difficult and challenging times in Israel. Israel is under Roman rule. Israel is uh, in captivity, as it were, under the Roman government. And they have demi-governors who are put in place You've got Herod, you've got others, you've got Quirinius, who is mentioned here. And as a result, they're being made to go register. They're being made to take a census. You've got to take time out of your, out of your life. You've got to uproot your family. You've got to go to your hometown. Uh, difficult governing times, difficult cultural times, difficult times in general. And it was in these difficult times that Jesus was born into he was born into difficult times to make the world a better place. And oh, how he did that then, and oh, how he does that today. In a world that we live in where there's a lot of difficulty, in a world where culturally things are not like they ought to be, governmentally things are very challenging, in a society where sin is rampant, and man's inhumanity against man is at a, a, a zenith, as it were. Jesus still, in these difficult times, gives peace and He gives hope to every one of us. As we think about that gift, that gift makes the world, a difficult world, such a better place to live in. But you know, these were also very stressful times in Joseph and Mary's life. Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, as we just read, uh, Joseph had to take Mary, who is very well into her pregnancy, almost to the point of ready to deliver, has to put her on a mule and take her with the caravan to go to uh, Bethlehem, the city of David, where they're from, take a good journey with a nine-month pregnant woman who's ready to deliver. Uh, imagine the stress You've got to, you probably loss of income, uh, had to pay money to do things, to eat. They had to have a place to stay. She's a very far in. You talk about a stressful time in Joseph and Mary's life. And in that stressful time, the greatest event that ever happened comes. There wasn't any, even any room at the inn. They go to the manger. Jesus is born in the manger. They, they, they lay him basically in the manger where the animals stay because there was nowhere else to put him. And yet the greatest gift that's ever come came during stressful times, even in Joseph and Mary's life. Don't you know that child that was promised by God, that was prophesied by God, that was told them by God it was going to come? Don't you know how that made their life so much better, so much easier, so much more worth living? What about our lives today? You know, there's a lot of stress that comes into my life. There's a lot of stress that comes into your life. There's a lot of external stress that other people, other organizations, other things put, in, put on us. And sometimes there's not really a way out of that, except that Jesus makes it all worth bearing. The gift of God's Son in the most stressful of situations, and when things are hard sometimes to carry the load. The gift of Jesus Christ makes all that worth bearing and makes it all worth never giving up. 
You know, Jesus himself was really born under rather unique and unusual circumstances, wasn't he? Listen to Luke chapter 2, verse 7 again. She, Mary, brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in a swaddling cloth, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Occasionally, you'll hear of somebody who doesn't make it to the hospital before they have to give birth, but not very often, especially in today's world. But do you hear of people giving birth in a manger, giving birth in an animal barn, as it were? Uh, unusual. Wasn't in their home, wasn't with any medical people around, wasn't in a comfortable environment. They're probably tired. There isn't good facilities and amenities available. Very unique and unusual circumstances. But you know, in our unique and unusual world we live in, the circumstances that all of us face, the gift of Jesus comes to us. And those circumstances, His salvation, His joy, His gift comes to all of us in times like those. And just like with those shepherds, just like with Joseph and Mary, good news and great joy comes with the gift of Jesus Christ. They were told goodwill toward men, peace and goodwill were available toward men. The shepherds heard that announcement in the city of David, a Savior has been born. And what good news that was for every person, every Israelite, every person heard that word Savior. And they would automatically think of the, the joy and the hope of Israel that had been placed on the Messiah. But you know, not just for the Israelites, not just for the shepherds, not just for Joseph and Mary, but the gift of Jesus Christ, God's Son coming into the world. That's good news and great joy for every person. It's good news because of why He came. Mary and Joseph were told in Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21, You'll call his name Emmanuel, which is translated. Call his name Jesus, Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. He will save his people from their sins. Friend, the good news and the great joy today is Jesus has come into the world. And his salvation is available to every person to remove sin in our life, to give us hope and joy. Uh, he is the reason for joy that we have today. Any person who will follow God's will, who will submit to Jesus as the Son of God, who will obey the gospel and live a life of faithfulness to Jesus, here's what Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light and you'll find rest for your souls. For in that same rest, to hear the words one day, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Just like then, Jesus brings good news and great joy to my life and yours. How those people then, how those shepherds rejoiced to hear that the Savior, the Messiah, the King of the world was born. And friend, that ought to motivate us today. Someone came to save me from my sin. God sent the Messiah, the Anointed One, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Ancient of days, Daniel 12 and 13. He came so that we could have the joy and the hope of salvation. And friend, just like then, so today, heaven and earth, Oh, to praise God for this great gift. Uh, listen to what happens again. Listen to Luke chapter 2, verses 13 following. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. So it was when the angel gone away from the heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this. And when they came and saw it, they began to tell everybody. 
Both heaven and earth praised God for this indescribable gift of His Son. Friend, what about us today? In a world that gets so caught up in itself, in a world that focuses so much on the here and now, where Satan tries in every way to get people's attention directed toward evil and sin, when I think about this indescribable gift of God's Son, doesn't it make us want to praise God live a life that really is going to bring honor and glory to Him, to live our life in such a way that we show how much that gift means. I want you to think about the gifts you've received. Maybe even the gifts you've received very recently. Maybe some of those are really special to you. Maybe some of those gifts were given to you by somebody who really, really loves you. Maybe they gave you something valuable Maybe it was something very sentimental. Maybe it was something that you were really wanting for a long time. You take that package, you, you unwrap that gift, you open it up, and wow, look at what this person gave me because they love me. And because of that, that makes you closer. That, that makes you appreciate. It. That makes you want to be a better person and, and, and how much you love that person even more. My friend, what about God? God wrapped that gift for every one of us, gave it in human form. Mary, a virgin, gave birth to Jesus Christ and gave us the Messiah, the one who came to this earth. When you think about Jesus, He came to this earth, didn't have to, was in heaven. He gave all that up, came to this earth, a place filled with wickedness and violence and sin. And He came here and lived a perfect life. He committed no sin. 1 Peter 2 verse 22, Tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4 verse 15, He knew no sin. 2 Corinthians 5 21, He came here and lived a perfect life. He went about this life doing good. Jesus healed those who were sick. Can you imagine what the lame man laid at Solomon's portico, what it felt like when he received the gift of being able to walk? Lazarus, when he was raised from the dead, the woman with the flow of blood in Mark 6, went about healing people, doing good, casting out demons and unclean spirits. He fed those who were hungry. On occasion, he fed 5,000. He healed those who were sick and had various ailments, and He went about doing good. And ultimately, for me and for you, the indescribable gift of God's Son suffered it all. He was laughed at. He was called chief of the devils, Beelzebub. He was mocked by a Roman garrison. He was spit upon by His own creation. Uh, they would slap Jesus. They would hit Jesus in the face. They would take a crown of thorns and a mocking, a, uh, and a mocking attempt as kingery to put a crown of thorns on him. They placed that robe on him over and over again on the back of Jesus. He was whipped with a cat of nine tails, a, a horrible torture instrument that you could probably... Here's what Isaiah 53 says. His visage was marred more than any man. What's that mean? You wouldn't recognize Jesus if you saw Him. He was beaten for me and for you. Ultimately, He suffered by having His hands and feet nailed to a cruel cross. And He hung in agony where He struggled for every breath until these words exited His lips. It is finished. And the gift of God came to a climax when Jesus died on the cross for me and for you. Friend, I want you to see today, and I want you to think about the gift coming to this world. I want you to think about the birth and what that meant. But it all points toward the cross. The cross of Jesus Christ is where it happened at. Peace 
was made through the cross, Ephesians 2.14. Redemption is found in His blood, Colossians 1 verse 7. He bore our sins on the tree, 1 Peter 2 verse 24. And so as we today think about Jesus, as we think about His death, as we think about His birth, as we think about His life, let's turn those thoughts inward to ourselves. What is this going to make me do? What's the gift mean in my life? And friend, here's what we hope it means today. As I think about Jesus' birth, as I think about our amazing God and His indescribable gift, I hope that birth makes me realize just how important it was for God to make salvation available. I hope that life sets an example of how God's people ought to strive to live and to pursue after the life of Jesus. And I hope that death makes me realize the extreme cost heaven paid so that I could have salvation. Friend, we ask you today, have you taken advantage of the indescribable gift of our amazing God? Have you submitted to God and obeyed His will? Do you believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? John chapter 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin and wickedness and turn to God in repentance? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you confess, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Acts 8, verse 36 and 37, and to have every sin washed away, to get into Christ and to take advantage of God's gift? Would you be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins? Jesus said it, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. And would you come up out of that watery grave of baptism to walk in newness of life and be faithful to death? Romans 6 verse 4, Revelation 2 verse 10. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more about the gospel of Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.